the pitch. Nobody can tell me this guy ain't match fixing. You just can't. He's doing it on purpose. He can't even control the ball. He's the worst footballer I've ever seen. Please, Smith Rowe, get that. Oh my, are you guy? Are you watching this guy play football? Title race. You lot, mate, sack this manager tonight. Sack him. It's over. You ball jobs. Finished. What are you looking at the screen for, bro? You're done. Sack Arteta today. That is the Spanish Brendan Rodgers. I've been saying it for years. I'm standing by my word. Until this guy wins something, I don't want to hear nothing. I don't care. Havertz is rubbish. Zinchenko's rubbish. Sack okay. We have to speak. And the reason why I'm doing this is an upload, because I need to get my thoughts across, and I need to show you guys some videos of some of this stuff also. But the mentality of the team doing so well all season, still so much to play for, and to want the manager sacked, come on, Curtis. You're better than that. Also, the mentality to just quit at any sense of adversity and to just say it's done and dusted shows the psychological edge Man City has over every single team in this league. And if I can't explain this to you guys, I'm going to get James Arcar, one of the best uh, one of the best YouTubers out there. I watched one of his videos today, and I think it's important that you guys see some of what he said because the psychological part of this is massive. For the players, for the fans, and for Manchester City, Liverpool, Arsenal, the three teams in this title race. Why is there so much cool, calm collectiveness when we're level on points with Liverpool? Why is there so much cool, calm collectiveness when Liverpool is ahead of us in the title race? But the moment Manchester City jumps ahead, it's done. Stop the manager. Everything is over. Even myself, I fall for it sometimes. Emotions aside, this title race is not over. There's still so many games to be played. Let me just show you guys what I mean. Because that clip right there with uh, with Curtis perfectly explains how a large portion of the fan base reacts when we drop points late in the title running. Don't forget that that's the first time we've lost in 2024. Don't forget that that's the first game where we've had a tough situation since the Fulham defeat earlier in the season. But first thing you jump to is sack Arteta. Come on. It's something deeper, guys. That's why today I'm going to be looking at the psychological side of the football game. And I need to show you guys this video because I thought this video perfectly explained everything that you need to know about the psychological side of the game. Now I'm going to put the link to James's video down in the comment section. Make sure you guys check it out. But this was amazing. Which is the sole reason for all of this. But before that, we need to touch on Arsenal. because. Of and when we talk about Arsenal, we're synonymous with one word. What is that word? I say this next word because it's often a word that, that you know fans and players alike have got to deal with. That's part of So they're going to do that. And a word that gets destructively thrown about. And football's tribal. So they're going to do that. And so that's something that, you know, fans... Guess what the word is in the comment section that it, Arsenal is synonymous with? Guess what the word Arsenal is synonymous with, ladies and gentlemen, before we go to James? And you want to know something? Guess what majority of fans say about Arsenal every single time late in the Premier League campaign. Arsenal, don't worry. Just sit back, relax. You know what? Let, let my man explain. Is the Asna train. Always on time. Right on time. Never disappoints. Arsenal, the gift that keeps on giving. Ah, oh, thank you, God. This Sunday is an amazing Sunday. God. You can see here, you got a United fan celebrating Arsenal, and his logic is that we continuously do this year in, year out. Hear it out. Your train can be late. But one train that will never be late is the Asna train. Oh, Lord, we The bottle word is connected to Arsenal at this moment in time, but let's continue with James's video. Fans and players alike have got to deal with. That's part of the journey to being elite and to being successful. But there's a reason as to why we need to talk about this word. 
you know what the word is. Say it with me. Bottle slash bottling. Now, I'm not saying they're bottling. I'm not because they're not. Like, look at where they are this season. Look at what they've done. I'm sick to my stomach with the lack of composure that we have in our fan base, including myself at times. But in order for us to win major honors, there's going to be hiccups in the road. There's going to be moments where you feel like your back is against the wall. And how are the players going to ever get past this? How are the fans ever going to get past this hurdle if every single time that we face a little bit of adversity, we go back and resort to saying it's done, it's dusted. So let's continue to hear what James had to say. In a game-by-game basis, there are these moments. And obviously what we see in the future is going to be a big part of this. But at the weekend, it felt pertinent. And what I will say is that the term Freudian slip is very, very applicable here. The term Freudian slip refers to an unintentional error regarded as revealing of subconscious feelings. So this... Do you hear that saying right there? I think that's very important. The unintentional error regarding as revealing subconscious feeling. I feel like a lot of you Arsenal fans or just Liverpool fans or just football fans in general continuously felt like Man City are going to win. And in the back of your mind, you're just waiting for that moment where we have that Freudian slip. But let him continue to explain it because he could explain it 10 times better than I could ever explain it. Let me continue. Actually, let me move out of the way so you guys can see the definition of Freudian slip. Because I think that is important in this situation. Let's continue. This is why the term bottling is so important here, because last season that was the case. Season before that, it was the case. And this season may not be the same. I don't think it will be the same. But what I will say is that these players remember last season and they have a point to prove that bottling it isn't a part of their identity. So therefore, it is naturally within their subconscious at all times. It has to be. It's something that that this Arsenal group needs to push through. And in particular... And it's something that the Arsenal fan base needs to also push through. Because as much as he says it's something that the Arsenal players are dealing with, it's something that the Arsenal fan base is dealing with. And we will never win any major honours if our players and our fan base have this defeatist mentality. You could say it comes from the manager and the players breed uh, this into us. They've been doing that majority of the season. One major loss and everything is unraveled. It's not a coincidence. I want to focus on the players here because I think for all of these examples, it's not about the managers, it's about the players. But what I thought was really interesting, and again, maybe a bit reductive, feel free to disagree with me in the comments down below. But when Liverpool lost their match, I think it presented Arsenal with initially on the face of it the perfect opportunity to create a gap and for the title to crucially remain in their hands. And the momentum bar, I think, is the perfect insight into the current minds of the Arsenal players, or certainly on this very Sunday afternoon. As you can see here, we had all the momentum at halftime. Second half, completely lost control. Against Dunai Emery, against Aston Villa, which is obviously a tough game in itself. So, you know, two things can be true. But this graph explains the situation perfectly. This is the catastrophe theory. Again, lots of theories here. Just we want to... And this is why people said, have Arsenal peaked too soon? Now, he's going to explain this right now to you and what you're looking at. But... When people say have Arsenal peaked too soon, this might be the reason why some of those things are said. Kind of enjoy and explore them, right? I'm probably not enjoy for some of you guys, right? The principles of this is that when maximum arousal and performance is reached, it falls off a cliff because it's not sustainable. Now let's have a look at the momentum bar and how it relates to that. So in the first half, Arsenal had comfortable control of the match apart from one shaky moment. But... At halftime, the score nil-nil, that's when we start to see the catastrophe theory come into play because it's at halftime where the what-ifs start to come into play and where the subconscious comes into play. And I think an important thing here as well is the fact that Arsenal have had an outlook and a confidence in 2024, but they've also played a lot of teams that they know they're better than. And they've also been up early in a whole host of those games. So that leads to a calming down and knowing of like control. And control is a crucial word here. But coming back to that idea that actually Liverpool losing was almost a bit of a problem because Man City had won. 
Facts. Liverpool losing put the pressure back on Arsenal. And I wasn't somebody who believed that pressure and the psychological element of the game negatively impacts the team. But now with City top and Liverpool losing, it almost creates an element of Arsenal have to win. Do or die mentality. And that can be detrimental to your performances at time. Because pressure can sometimes make you do unprecedented things. But let's continue with what James has to say, because I felt like he explains it better than I do. And they'd set the standard. And Liverpool had lost. So, yes, there was opportunity. But as time progressed, that subconscious thought of, well, we've seen them lose. Let's not do that. Certainly stepped into the minds of not just the players, but again, the fan bases. Because I think the it is a partnership. The crowd. Facts. Facts. When you have fans celebrating, Arsenal fans, Arsenal fans celebrating Liverpool's loss before the game, even ki- is the before the ball is even kicked, you have Arsenal fans counting their chickens, including myself. I was silly enough to go on the football terrace. I was silly enough to see Arsenal fans celebrating the Liverpool loss before the ball was even kicked, only for ourselves to lose. Only for ourselves to perform as bad as we did. It's a joke. You had this sense of superiority that you never really had. We need to chill. Let's hear what James had to say, though. Because there's there's this part here. This part here really got me. Right, the goalkeeper, these are very different games that we're talking about, but these things happen. He really wraps it up quite well. And one thing that we don't really talk about on this channel and majority of channels don't really talk about when it comes to football is they don't really speak about the things that aren't spoken about, like the psychological side of the game. So let's get back to this and let's just look at it one more time before we wrap up this video. Manchester City and their ability to apply pressure. I was talking. Man City's ability to apply pressure has already basically made it an afterthought that the title race is over. And this is another major thing that they do. We don't feel this pressure because of the loss. We feel this pressure because of Manchester City's history. And once again, James breaks it down perfectly. So I'm going to let you guys hear what he has to say. To my producer Kai about this. And I was saying to him, it's a bit like a diving competition. And the interesting, stay with me. The interesting thing here is that Man City, by them going first and performing their dive, and there's no splash at all. You then think the other divers, Arsenal is a diver, Liverpool's a diver. Are you still with me? When they dive, they can't splash. They've got to be perfect. And that need to be perfect, that's intense. And this is the thing about Man City, because their team never gets their mentality questioned. You talk about... And why would they? Why would you question a team's mentality that continues to win? You question the teams that don't. And that analogy of the splash is what I'm going to leave you guys with. And just think about it. Just think about it. And I think this is one of my favorite videos I've done Eric, in a long time because James puts things in such a beautiful perspective that I feel like I just needed to show you guys this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you understand that it's not over. But the way that you think about it and the way that you feel about your opponent that's in that position makes you give gives you a sense of inevitability and that your team is more likely to slip. And that just comes from a subconscious thing. Psychological side of football and the psychological side of humans and, and, and thing is crazy. And sometimes we don't think about that. But hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'm out, people. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. Peace out. I'll catch you guys on the next one. And yeah, go go subscribe to James and go subscribe to my channel. We're out of here, people. Peace.